A Stuart 7A model steam plant, part 17, completing the reversing lever locking mechanism. In my box of random pieces of metal, I found this. It's 5 16 of an inch in diameter and ideal for making this next part. The small felt tip pen mark is not really accurate, it just gives me some idea when to stop turning. For the first part of the job I'm going to have to remove quite a lot of metal because I need to thread the end of this 7BA. And to make matters worse I cannot find my micrometer anywhere. But at least I have this, my old adjustable spanner. This is not just any adjustable spanner, this is a barco, or as it should be pronounced, baco. But I will pronounce it barco because in English B-A-H is pronounced bar, as in bar humbug. Because this old adjustable spanner is so well made, I can use it as a kind of caliper. Providing that I press my thumb firmly onto the wheel to stop it revolving and therefore altering the setting. I think this is the final cut. The end of the piece of bar is down to about 3 30 seconds of an inch. Yes, that will do nicely. Now where did my micrometer go? I'll look for that later. Now it's time to thread the end of this 7BA. This stuff is tapping compound. Maybe I don't need quite so much as this, but at least I will get a good clean thread. And once again I'm using my own design of tailstock die holder. It's just an adapter that holds a standard die stock and allows you to fit it in the tailstock to keep it in line, which in turn means that the thread will be concentric with the piece of bar. Very shortly I'm going to be making another video about making one of these die stock adapters for larger dies. But for now here's the thread and that's more than good enough. Now I need to turn this piece of 516 steel bar down to 730 seconds of an inch. While the auto traverse was turning this piece of metal I was looking around the lathe and sadly my micrometer was still nowhere to be seen but eventually I found it on the table over the other side of the workshop. So with equilibrium restored to the universe I'm now using my micrometer to just check that this is 730 seconds of an inch. And as you can see here, it is. Over now to the drilling machine, I held the part in the machine vise. First of all I used the centre drill, followed by a twist drill to drill a hole through it. Then it was back over to the lathe, first of all to clean up the part with some wet or dry sandpaper, followed by parting it off. Parting it off was quite difficult because this is stainless steel. And when you part off stainless steel you have to keep the tool moving, as stainless steel work hardens very quickly. In this clip I've turned the part around in the chuck and I'm machining the other side of it. This component needs to be 7 30 seconds of an inch in diameter and 7 30 seconds of an inch long. That's not including the part that's a threaded 7BA. It's time to see whether this part fits to the other bits. Well it seems to fit through the reversing lever. Before I fit everything together though, I'll make the other part. And this is really simple, I'm making a washer. The outside diameter of this washer needs to be 3 8 of an inch or thereabouts. And now it is 3 8 of an inch. The internal diameter of this washer needs to be 7 30 seconds of an inch to match the barrel that I've just made. The usual process, centre drill first followed by a twist drill. This small washer is not really a precision part as long as it fits nice and easily over the barrel, that's all I want. Here I'm parting it off. It's a very small part, I need it to be 1 16th of an inch thick. This is mild steel and as you can see it cuts very differently to stainless. Before parting it off fully I get rid of the sharp edges. And also so it doesn't drop into the chip tray I'm using a small twist drill shank to catch it as the parting tool breaks through and it's parted off. I always keep the edge of this small parting tool flat because I often use this parting tool for other jobs like plane turning. A good example of this was when I made the eccentric sheave for this engine. Before fitting the parts together I'm cleaning up the washer using a piece of 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper and some oil. And this is how the parts fit. The locking shaft goes through the hole in the barrel and then when you tighten the next part that I'm about to make onto the thread, the whole thing locks solid. In this clip I'm using a knurling tool, and this makes a very nice pattern on the steel, and allows your fingers to grip the piece. I'm making the locking screw for the mechanism. This is a very simple component, a plain turning job with a hole drilled down the middle and threaded 7BA. In this part of the clip I've rotated the tool post, 
so I can move the tool into a different position. And now I'm using another parting tool, not the one I normally use, this is a very thin one. And really this is a grooving tool. I don't use it very often unless I want to groove something. For instance I would use this to make a groove in a piece of metal to hold a very small o-ring. But in this example I'm using the grooving tool just to make this part look better. The shape of it will be more or less as it's shown on the drawing, it doesn't need to be exact. As always I centre drill first and here I'm using a tapping size drill for a 7BA thread. I'm drilling this hole deep enough to clear the part that I've turned. And here I'm threading the hole with a 7BA tap and plenty of lubricant. Being very careful at this stage not to snap off the tap. Thinking about it, in the scheme of things it would have been a better idea to drill and tap the hole first. Then should the tap have broken off in the work I wouldn't have lost any time. Thankfully the tap did not break off in the hole, so now it's time to part off the component. But before the parting tool goes all the way through, I use some emery cloth to get rid of the sharp edges, because this is a part that's going to be handled frequently. This clip shows the finished component. I think it's time to demonstrate it in action. It's very simple. The locking shaft fits through the cross hole. And as you tighten the knurled part, what happens is the barrel pulls into the washer and traps the bar against the washer, therefore locking it in position. The drawing shows an extra hole to be drilled in the steam chest. I don't think I'm going to do this. And for the end stop, I'm going to make something better than a nut. I'm thinking that the best place to put this would be on the centre stud. Although this stud is no good at all. It's an easy job though to remove it and replace it with a special longer stud to hold the component and allow it to swivel. I'll do this as the final job in the next video, followed by lots of obsessive tweaking of the valve timing to get the engine to run perfectly. That's it for this video, please stay safe and well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.